Okay, it's on. Is it the uh, recording now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jonathan, grab your drink. It's distracting. On December 7th, 2013, my son was uh, brutally murdered by Las Vegas Metro Police. In a little bit, I will demonstrate how my son was uh, shot by law enforcement officers when he was unarmed. I'm making this recording today. Uh, so <clears throat> December 16th, 2013. I just needed this time to compose myself to, to do this. With uh, Metro officers lying all the time, I just need to do this to get the word out. I'm actually sitting in the my home here where I'm being evicted and uh, over this incident. I just want to let you know that my son was trying to reach out to Hollywood. He was trying to do it uh, the right way or the wrong way. I cannot control the way my son was thinking at the time. What he wanted to do, he wanted to be basically uh, put the weapon down, surrender, and that's exactly what he did, but Metro shot him anyway. Uh, he wanted to uh, be arrested, and then at that point, uh, then it would have been like, oh, he just flipped out, whatever. And instead of him going to jail for that night, he would have went to a hospital to get help, and that was his plan, except his plan basically backfired on him because he would not listen to me when it came to Las Vegas Metro procedures, because I told him when you lay the weapon down, Metro is a 92% probability they're still going to fire upon you and killing you. Then my son made a statement, well, maybe that's a good time to die. Then. He goes, I'll die for you, Dad. I love you, Dad. He goes, all I want Hollywood to do is come forth and uh, help. But he goes, they turn your backs on you. He goes, they're evil. He goes, so maybe I can do a change. And I tried my best to talk him out of it. He was upset that Hollywood uh, would send him get well cards. He was upset because they promised to help me, to all of us to be a family again. They uh, said things and uh, they would write my emails and stuff like that and I would read them. My son Patrick had access to my passwords and stuff because I love my boy and he would read that too. And uh, when uh, Charlie Sheen asked uh, Hollywood to uh, help me out, my son got very upset because he, he stated, Charlie can do it, why, 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 does, why is he asking when he knows what happened? And the point is two years ago, to set the record straight, uh, two years ago, my son had a 1939 Russian Legant rifle. The rifle actually fell over because the bolt was jammed. I told him to put it in the corner, don't touch it. I had no idea that he laid it up against the table by his computer. Uh, and when he was on the uh, internet, it did the uh, pull, to pull table effect. It just slid this way. He grabbed it and it went off, blowing half his face off. My son passed away that night, but we were able to get him back. He spent several months in the, in the hospital, and again, doctors lied. We'll get you a new face, we'll, we'll do this, we'll do that. My son got sick and tired of it. My son blamed himself why I couldn't get back to Hollywood, because that particular night before my son got injured the first time by accident, we were out celebrating that I... I finally got my SAG card back, was all paid into date and all that stuff and I was recontacting certain channels to get back into Hollywood. And that's how, that's what you do, it's called you know auditions and stuff like that and to be free enough to have the time to do so. After my son got shot the first time, uh, clearly that didn't happen. I had to focus more on saving my son's life. I had no choice but to uh, go to O'Reilly Auto Parts and beg for a job. The reason I did that was I've been dealing with checkers in O'Reilly for many, many years. And they knew of me as the Hollywood stuntman actor or whatever. And I spent lots of money buying parts and restoring cars. So when I went in there, I just said, I, need, I just need a job. 
and uh, they were kind enough to uh, hire me, you know, as a driver, parts counter guy, but mainly a driver. And uh, my son was upset because my career really got uh, pushed on a whole bottom line. And then, you know, we were, you know, fighting for him. Then he blamed himself again. Again, the doctors started a bunch of crap to help me, to help him, but they never did. He got tired of the lies. Then my son went on the internet, going back probably about six months ago. Of course, I did not know what he was doing. He would ask me questions. Well, how come Dad, the Hollywood, is uh, not helping me? How come, how come he's not helping you? And I, I told my son, I said, I'm sorry. It's just out of sight, out of mind. He goes, what does that mean? I said, well, they know of the problem. Ellen DeGeneres knew of the problem. She emailed me and said, you know, my heart goes out to you and your family. And I begged her through emails, I even called the studios, to try to get on the show and step one, step two, step three fail. So eventually I just gave up. And that hurt my son because, you know, I have to focus more on my son. I had to focus on, you know, the job. I had to focus on some type of income. I had to focus on a roof for my head, for my boy, and I would do anything for him. Again, my uh, son was upset. He asked me more questions. I said, I don't know what's going on with Ellen DeGeneres. I said, it takes time. I said, she's very busy. You know, maybe we can't get booked on the show. Maybe we can't tell her story. And that went into, like, my son's filing cabinet in his own head, and he just let it go. Again, you know, yeah, I was upset, I was bothered, but I try not to let my son know that. So I kept forcing and forcing myself to do O'Reilly, and I'm there to this day. And uh, I came home, uh, trying to catch up to date here, I came home in the... My son goes, Dad, I need to talk to you. And I had no idea that uh, he was uh, drinking black velvet, you know, four or five drinks before I even got home. I had no clue. But he asked me if I would like a couple of drinks with him. Can we talk? And I went, sure. And we're talking. That's what father and son does. So we're talking, and he goes, I got some questions. He goes, out of sight, out of mind. He goes, I got some ideas. What if I put it in their minds and in their sight? And I said, what are you talking about? He indicated to me that he just had uh, this plan, you know, but he wouldn't indicate to me uh, what he was going to do. If I knew this beforehand, I could have prevented it and stopped him before he even got to his gun, whatever. You know, he's 27 or 26 years old. You know, he's got a mind of his own. I can't control it. But then again, you know, we talked and I said, I love you. I said, we got some work to do tomorrow. It's a Saturday coming up. We can talk then. Because uh, me and my son was going to go to my brother's house, Rocky Lee South, and fix his car on the fuel injectors and lines and stuff like that. My son was all happy and thrilled about that. But then he got upset with me because I told him I needed the crash. I went to sleep approximately 9 o'clock that night. Around midnight or, I don't know, maybe close to 1 o'clock in the morning. I really don't know the time. By the time that time I was sleeping, my son was in the back room with my wife. My son was on the, his cell phone listening to YouTube and music. He was... Uh, seemed okay, and then out of the blue, he just got up and he started pacing. He's, he made a statement to my wife, Dad says, you know, he's got to break the circle. And yes, I did say that. I told him, I got to break the circle. I got to have an avenue to, if I actually did a film, I would need a continuity so I can actually leave uh, O'Reilly gracefully. I can travel. But before I could do that, I needed a continuity so I could at least cover all the bills, say for three months, pay pay everything. And you take the thing that that beeping thing. 
Anyway, that's my keychain going off. I apologize. But uh, anyway, just kind of lost track there for a second. Uh, mm. It's getting tougher to talk about this. I'm trying to hold it together. Anyway, uh, my son yells, Pops, come here, Pop. We're going to talk now. So I uh, get up. I'm literally scared because I, you know, I don't, I, the tone was different. Everything was different. I got off the couch I, and I ran into the bedroom because I thought, you know, possibly he harmed himself or, or something went down and I don't know. And it turns out that my son goes, we're going to talk now, Dad. We're going we're gonna to talk. I said, you got my full attention. So he asked me to sit on the uh, bed. And he had his pistol in his hand. It wasn't pulled back. It wasn't loaded. In other words, chambered. He goes, I want to tell you something. He goes, I love you, Dad. But he goes, I can't take it no more. He goes, I'm going to break the circle. I'm going to make it better. And this is what I'm going to do. And he goes on and on and on, telling me that he doesn't want to die. But if this is the case, like Metro states, my son goes, well, maybe it's a good time to die. My son didn't mean that. And two, he did not know that my wife dialed 911 behind his back. He was just talking freely, out loudly, and the things he said on that tape that Metro now has, he did that for one reason and one reason only, to scare the living shit out of me, and he did. Now when my son had his weapon, he had it in the air like this. I did not attempt to twist it and get it from him, for the simple fact is, I'm thinking, is it chambered or is it not chambered? And if it's chambered, and he clicks. Innocent people upstairs, like I, I could uh, shoot through the ceiling, possibly hurt somebody. When my son had the gun this direction, towards the closet area, same thing. It can go up and maybe hit some other family sleeping. So I was basically forced to, you know, do what he says. You know, he, he says, I love you, Pop. I don't want to kill you. Don't make me shoot you. And then he asked and I asked for a hug. He hugged me and then he hugged my wife. And then he says, Dad, he goes, it's too late. It's too late. And I said, it's never too late. I said, put the gun down and we forget about this and get some help. He goes, no, it's too late. And by the way, this is a prop gun. It's plastic movie prop gun so you know anyway uh, I told my son no it's not too late what is your what is your so-called plan now he told me this before my wife dialed the 911 tape and if anyone knows you know that's my son you know he told me that he did not want to die. All he wanted to do is have the news crew come over here and the police. And he figured he was just going to be arrested. That he was just going to, you know, they're going to demand to put the gun down, da, da, da. He, and he, he did, they asked him. The first time they asked him, he did not comply. My son's got hard hearing. Very hard hearing. And it's, it's 20 degrees outside. Officers don't know that. I do. And then they yelled again, louder. My sons looked over at me. He's like, what do I do? What do I do? He was scared to death because there was over three dozen cops out there and over that many cars. So on an estimate of officers in that parking lot, maybe 40. Estimate of cars out there, 
over 25. Literally scared the crap out of him. So he paced back and forth with his weapon this way. Never pointing it at the officers. Never firing at the officers. And then I yelled at the same time Metro did. It was almost in unison. Pat, I love you. Put the weapon down. He looked right at me and went, Pat, they will not shoot you. My son looked at me and said, okay, Pop, okay. And I'm only standing mere seven feet from him, but I'm behind a glass window with this windows open or closed, whatever I can see and I can hear. And uh, my son had his hands up with his hands flat out, open, gun on the finger on the slide. And when he went down, when the officers dropped the weapon, my son ain't going to take a $900 gun because he wants to live, of course. He's not going to drop it on concrete. This Glock was his baby. So what he did was he lowered the weapon. He got about that five to the ground, you know, four or five inches, and he dropped it. As he was standing up, he turned and one officer, he's still not identified, I don't care what that Metro report says, fired one round, striking my son here in this hip area. My son's like this and he turns. He turns down like this and he takes his hand, open the jacket, and he puts his hand here and he stands back up and, you know, the cop just, you know, just went nuts. You know, the chaos went and he got his hand back up fast and they opened up on him. The first shot in my son's hips what triggered the mass shooting at my son. They shot him roughly 40 to 51 times, multiple gunshot wounds. When my son first got shot in the hip, he goes, you bastard shot me, you mother whatever, why? I surrendered. And I witnessed that and I heard him and I saw him surrender and I heard what he said. Then he looked at me. My son's hands are still up. He's in pain. All Metro had to do at that point is walk up to him, handcuff him, take him into custody, and then get him some help for the bullet wound here. If that one officer, in my opinion, did not hit my son in the side. His hands would still would have been up, surrendered. They know the gun's on the ground. What's he going to shoot him with? Two rifles that's on his back? Impossible. Metro claimed that he pointed rifles at them. They never left his shoulder. Then Metro recanted and said he never pointed a rifle. And then now Metro's trying to cover their rears and said, now he pointed a handgun. Really? How come the handgun's on the ground? Two, when the one officer shot him in the hip, that opened massive gunfire. Outright killing my son. They had no right or business when that officer says they go into a kill mode, they go into a safety mode. Fine, if that's your training, you need to go back to the police department and re-account re this. When somebody can't hear in an ear, you don't know my son's medical condition about his hearing. It's cold outside. He's scared. You know, you could have got a PA. You know, yeah, he sees guns. He sees officers. Yeah, he's scared to death. Wouldn't you be? And how would you feel if you surrendered and you put your weapon down and you were standing up to turn yourself in and surrender and then you, then you got shot? How mad would you be? And then to have officers open fire and outright murder him in front of me. And it gets better. After my son lay there dead, three officers jumped on top of him, punching him in the back of the hairline, back here, pushing his back down, ordering him, stop resisting, 
Stop resisting. Put your hands behind your back. Put your hands behind your back. I'm outside at that point. And I yell at the officer. I said, man, you done effed up, buddy. Well, who are you? I said, I'm his father. He was surrendering. Why did you shoot? Why did you shoot him? And then why did you open fire on him when he's got his hands up? What Metro did to me, they pointed weapons at me. I'm in my underwear. My hands are up. But by then, with all that gunfire, there's no doubt witnesses here at uh, this apartment complex. I'm begging anybody to come forth. Contact me. You can reach me at actors301 at AOL.com. Contact me directly. We all need to make a stand and go, and met, go against Metro for all the victims that were murdered by Metro police. They need to go back, be retrained, and two, these three officers only a year to a year older than my son. I mean, come on. And that he was dressed in full army gear? That's crap. He had a military jacket on, yes, because my buddy Rocky gave that to him. Because he always wanted one. The fact is, it's 30 degrees outside, and it makes it really nice to wear. You know, it's warm. But that's all he had was to be warm. He did not want to get shot. He did not want to die. But after all this, before this went down, when I says Metro will still kill you, my son stated, then fine. Maybe it's a good time to die. It's my time to die. What my son was telling me long before this went down, long before I even waked up the first time before we talked, he went to bed. I, I actually I went to bed, and, you know I had no idea what uh, was going on, but uh, he told me he wanted he had a, wanted to be a long live a long life, and all he wanted was Hollywood to wake up. He wanted me back in action films. He wanted me out of O'Reilly Auto Parts, and he wanted us to be a family. That's all he wanted more than anything else, a family. And anyone that ever knows my son, you know I'm talking the truth. He was a lovable, sweet boy. So something needs to be done with Metro. I don't know how I'm getting this energy to speak here with you tonight. But I'm asking the public, please, if anybody saw anything, come forth. I'm going to go as far as take this prop gun. And I'm going to do a reenactment of each step and everything my son did up until the time he dies by Metro. Also, you're going to see the point of view from the Metro looking at my son. And then from that point of view, you're going to see where my son was standing. And you can clearly see when they said that my son fired upon officers. Now they say no. Now they say my son pointed the rifle at them. That Now they say he never pointed the rifle. Now they're claiming that my son pointed a handgun. Impossible. It's on the ground. They outright murdered him. The first gunshot on the hip is what triggered the massive shooting. Question. When his hands were in the air and he was disarmed, Metro should have used non-lethal force. Grenade. Powder powder packs. They hit you and they explode and you breathe in the powder. You can't breathe. You're going to drop. I don't care. I mean, it hits you like a shotgun. They could have hit you with bean bags. They could have hit you with rubber bullets. If they want to load them up. Yeah, I can uh, handle uh, 51 bruises on my son, knock him on his ass, but he's alive. They never gave my son a chance. They based it on that 911 tape because they're ignorant. They have no clue what was going on, they just base it on what they heard. And then if they say that my wife said he was suicidal, that's pure bullshit. They assume that. They put that word in my, in my wife's mouth. If you remember, that was an open 9-1 call. Nobody talked to Metro. Nobody could say their side. My wife dialed that number for one reason, one reason only. To get the cops out here to talk to them. Period. I had no clue the cops were outside. My son certainly had no clue the cops were outside. But once my son went outside, oh yeah, 
The cops confronted him. My son never confronted the cops. Can you think of anything else, brother? Can you pause that? Anyway, I'm back. I had, I had to take a breather. Uh, anyway, I just want the, the world, you know, to know that my son was a very lovable boy. Uh, what he did was a drastic act. Uh, he just wanted to get the word out. He wanted to put it in the sight of uh, Hollywood and my Hollywood buddies. He wanted people to know. Uh, my son used to text uh, Jean-Claude all the time. I email, I've known Jean-Claude for, you know, 27 some odd years. You know, Pat was just a little baby, you know. So me and Jean-Claude became close to family and we are family. But I lost, I lost contact with him about 12 years ago or so. And he found me we, and we found each other. And uh, he's working on some projects and stuff like that. And I, uh, he's got projects in mind. And I, there's one project I want to do with him that's my idea. It's called Double Trouble. And my son just thought we could just jump right in this. And I went, uh, honey, it doesn't work that way. I said, you have, he's got to be free. I got to be free. The actors got to commit. There's certain process of steps we have to take before we can do this. Then once we get a green light, everybody's notified, okay, we film on this day. Be here this day. And my son, you know, then he understood. I said, you know, I've been doing film and movies and TV shows since 1982. And, uh, my son just uh, just couldn't handle it. Uh, he would look in the mirror at the first time he got shot by accident, and he would be he would be very upset. You know, people make fun of him. People are saying that you know he's ugly. He'll, he'll never have a girlfriend. He'll never have a life. If uh, the doctors would have stepped forth and did the work, my son wouldn't be dead today. He'd be happy. My son wouldn't have felt fell into a depression mode. He'd been, he'd been fine. Uh, if uh, the TV shows I contacted would have aired my story to get my son help, I even called TMZ, left several messages. They never called me back because they couldn't see. I One news reporter from a TV show, I don't remember his name, and he goes, I'm sorry, sir, uh, it's just not uh, top news. And I said, why? He goes, we understand you're a Hollywood actor that's fallen on bad luck. And I went, bad luck? Really? He goes, I said, what are you telling me? He goes, well, sir, it's not topical news. He goes, I hate to tell you this, but your son didn't die. And that's another issue uh, my son overheard when he read my stuff. I don't have that computer anymore. It burned up seven or eight months ago. Everything, all that was on the hard drive and it's just gone. I just wish I had some of it to back up what I'm saying about, you know, what's going on. Jean-Claude Van Damme uh, emailed me at my private AOL and he told me that his wife Claudia, his kids Christopher and Bria Branca, I call her Bree, Uncle Dan, you know, you know, they're my family and uh, I love them and I will never, you know, push, I will never beg, you know, I just don't want my sons uh, to die in vain. I just want the world to know that what he did was heroic, it was the ultimate sacrifice, and I wish to God I could have changed it. If somebody would have answered my cries and really got into this, my son would be fine. I love you guys. I'm going to go ahead and uh, do this reenactment while I still got some energy. God bless. And you can find me on Facebook. You can find me at my AOL. I did give my AOL address, I believe, to anybody who may have information of a witness to go against Las Vegas Metro Police. I am seeking an attorney. I am talking to radio stations. I've been all over the news. 
And as you can see with my honesty in my heart, my story has been the same from the beginning to the end. And it will remain that way. I'm making this tape now in case this, tri this trial goes on for years and where my brain is cloudy and I can't remember everything, this will be my backup. This tape right here. And all I got to do is hear key words and it will trigger my brain. I got served with an eviction notice again today. Five day quit, be kicked up by constable. The only thing in the state of Nevada, they can't do crap to me until after the new year of the 12th of next year. But I am pushing to uh, get another apartment. My boss is at O'Reilly, been very uh, sweet, nice, and they understand, you know, I will be going to back to do action films. I will be going forth and it's going to be hard because I'm not going to have my son with me. But I'll have him in my heart. I'm not mad at him. I love my boy. And I forgive you, son. Peace, guys. I'll be doing the, uh, the reenactment tape real soon. I'll walk you through it. Peace.